been alone with you inside my mind And in my dreams I've kissed your lips a thousand times I sometimes see you pass outside my door Hello Oh, I can see it in your eyes I can see it in your smile You're all I ever wanted And my arms are open wide Cause you know just what to say And you know just what to do and I want to tell you so much I love you Tell me how to win your heart For I haven't got a clue But let me start by Thank you. Hello, how you guys doing? Well, uh, as you all know, uh, my name is Brandon Diaz, um, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, first of all, I want to take a moment and thank TEDx for having me, TEDx Ashburn for having me, and Nick for having me out here. This is a true honor and a pleasure for me to be here with you guys, and to be one of these speakers is kind of surreal for me, because I'm just listening to these people speak and um, hearing all they've accomplished. I'm kind of baffled to be standing up here with them. And um, it's kind of surreal. I, I never realized how much I have accomplished, but also I never realized how much there is to be accomplished. And um, so I'm going to start off with a little um, backstory. So about when I was six years old, um, there was kind of a new fad in the airways, um, which was reality shows and like and, and talent reality shows. American Idol was this new reality show that came out that was was, was this cool new thing that people were going out there and putting themselves out there on the spot in front of four really incredible people. And um, I saw that and I really wanted to do that. That was a dream of mine since I was six years old. And um, so I'm gonna tell you, sorry, excuse me. I wanna share with you three things that led me to where I am today. It started from bowling alley bars and what got me to the top 24 on American Idol. And that for me was three things. Three P's, and the first P being passion. Now, who here is passionate about what they do? I, I know for sure there's plenty of passionate people out here because I've been hearing them all day, and I for sure am passionate about what I do. Um, some people find their passions younger in life. Some people find them much older in life, and um, I was lucky enough that my parents saw this, this musical energy around me from a very young age. Um, they would hear me singing in my crib and singing in the shower, and my dad says... From the day I was born, he said, that kid's going to be a singer, because he would just hear me doing certain things as like a, a little kid usually shouldn't be able to do, shouldn't be able to hold pitch and match pitch, and so they saw that in me, and, um, and I didn't really realize my passion for music until I was about eight years old. Um, I was visiting family, uh, my mother's side of the family in Illinois, in Springfield, Illinois, and um, we were at a bowling alley. My mom and my dad were in the bar with all the adults, and all the kids were outside bowling. Um, I was enjoying myself, having fun with all my cousins, and my mom comes running out and says, do you want to sing karaoke? And I had no idea that, I knew that I was going to be singing, but I had no idea I was going to be in front of 40 to 50 people. And I had never done that before. I'd only sang for family and, and close relatives. And so my mom said, come on, and I'm, I'm a mama's boy, so <laughs> anything my mom said, I was going to do. Um, and so she grabbed my hand and she pulled me towards the bar and she had to do a little convincing of the bouncer because an eight-year-old going into a bar is not a normal thing. 
Um, I, uh, she, she talked to him a little bit and said, hey, he's a really good singer. Please let him sing one song, and he'll be out of your hair. And so we took some convincing, but we finally got him to let me in. And I'm, I walk up to the stage, and my dad's waiting there for me, and we finally chose a song. And the song was You Had Me From Hello um, by Kenny Chesney. And I got up there, and I was so nervous that I had to have my father stand behind me and sing every word into my ear. Um, and my mom had to stand directly in front of me so I could run into her arms when I was done. And, um, and that was my first experience performing. And then once that crowd, once the song ended and that crowd just blew up into applause, I have never felt so incredible in my life. And that was when I truly knew that music and singing and performing was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, another really cool example of passion leading to success um, in my life is my father. My, um, my dad has always had a love for um, the profession of being a firefighter and a paramedic. And um, from a young age, he's always wanted to be that. And about, I think it's almost two years ago now, he just recently retired from a 30-year um, career as a firefighter and a paramedic. And the reason I truly knew he was passionate about what he did is when he came home um, every day after his 24-hour shifts, uh, he would run to me, and the first thing he said to me is, you're not going to believe what happened at work today. And there was this light behind his eyes that I will never forget, and it's still to this day I see it. He's an interpreter as well, and I see it when he does that as well. And that was something I always wanted um, in what, with what I do. Whatever I choose as a profession, I wanted that passion that my father had. And um, when those shows of like American Idol and everything were coming up, it, it almost instilled this, this mentality as a young kid that I have to fit into this mold. I have to kind of be what the world wants me to be and what the producers behind the scenes want me to be. And pun intended, I kind of would ask the world and ask myself, hello, is it me you're looking for? And I would ask myself that daily. I'm like, is, am I going to fit into that mold? Am I going to be the next America Minor? Am I going to be the next voice? Um, and that kind of leads me to my next um, P and my three Ps, which is perseverance. And um, I know that's kind of like a stereotypical thing to say, but I truly stand by it. Perseverance is one of the main things you need in order to succeed in this world because anything you try to do and anything you, are, or you want to succeed in is not going to be easy, no matter what it is. Um, as long as you work hard, it's going to be a rough path, and you're going to go through a lot of hardships. And from a very young age, I, was, um, I, I knew what I wanted to do, and I got a lot of weird looks from adults saying, oh, you don't really know what you want to do. You don't, you're not sure yet. You're still young. You're still learning. And I would look at them and I'd say, no, I, I know that this is what I want to do and this is what I want to be. Um, and that kind of negativity, along with bullying throughout middle school, I was pretty harshly bullied throughout middle school, saying singing's for girls and stuff like that. It, it just, it really got to me, but it gave me a very tough, tough skin. And in this industry specifically, the entertainment industry, you need that um, because they, they don't baby you in, uh, in that world. And um, that kind of leads me to my next story, when I was about 16 years old, I put myself out there um, by auditioning for The Voice. And I did The Voice when I, was, like, as, when I was 16 years old, and I was in LA for five weeks. I was pulled out of my sophomore year of high school and just thrown into this almost celebrity-like world, um, and it was surreal. I was, I was loving life. I was meeting incredible producers, incredible people, um, other musicians, and it, this was the first time I had been in like, a musician's world. And I got to enjoy it for five weeks, but then all of a sudden it was just ripped out from underneath me. It was just like this rug was just pulled out from underneath me. And my whole world kind of in a sense came crashing down because my dream had always been to be on one of these reality shows. And that was my, that was my opportunity and I, I just I didn't do it. I didn't make it. And um, as a 16-year-old, when you're still trying to figure yourself out and your life out to have that big of a thing on your back, it, it really pays a lot of tolls and, and causes a lot of heartache because you want, to, you want to see your dream come true, but you don't know how long it's going to take. Um, and then, not long after, six months later, I was, took another chance and went out for it and I auditioned for The X Factor. So within seven months of each other, I was on two different national television shows um, at 16. And again, I was put into this world and it was ripped out from underneath me. And this time, it wasn't because I didn't perform my best or I didn't, I didn't shine enough, but it was for contractual issues. I was contractually obligated to the voice, and I couldn't move on in the X Factor. And that was just like, oh, my whole, like, I was this close. If they would have just given me the opportunity, this could have been the chance. 
And that was, again, so hard as a 16-year-old, almost 17 at that point. But um, I got back home to my normal life back at, uh, I was at Briarwoods High School, and I just, I felt like giving up. I felt like I, that music wasn't for me and singing wasn't for me anymore because I wasn't making it. It just, people would, maybe, maybe these people didn't see it from the get-go, so I don't have it. And I started getting into theater in, in high school. My sister got me really into theater all through high school, and that kind of rejuvenated my love for, for performing. And it really brought that dream back into reality. Um, and so th- I took the next step, and I applied to Berklee College of Music, where I currently attend, and I got that yes. And that was like the first yes of a series of just open doors. And it felt incredible. I, I remember I was sitting in IHOP with, I don't, I don't know why I had the guts to open this email in front of 30 of my peers, but I was sitting in IHOP, we had just had a show, and we were all, it was a cast party. Um, we were doing Shrek the Musical. I don't know if anybody knows that musical. I played Lord Farquaad. <laughs> it was one of my favorite roles of all time. There is video footage, and I don't have it, but I want it. Um, and anyways, I was in this IHOP, and I got the email. And I literally, without thinking, opened it. And I don't know what, I, what was going through my head, but I, I saw it. All I saw was congratulations. And I remember jumping so high, my head almost hit the ceiling. And my whole, I, I remember yelling, and the, all of them just, they knew what was happening. They knew that the today was the day, so they all just started screaming. And it was one of the most incredible feelings. And so that just really brought back everything I had worked for. Everything I had done leading up to that point, it just all felt like it paid off finally. And again, that led to just a series of more yeses and a series of open doors. And fast forward to about October last year, um, when I got to Berkeley, backtrack, when I got to Berkeley, I was kind of done with reality shows. Um, I didn't want to pursue those talent reality shows as a, way, a means of making it anymore. I had done, I had paid my dues, I had auditioned, I had tried, and I did, it didn't work out. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try a different route, and I'm going to do my own thing. Um, but out of the blue, I got an email from a producer that works on American Idol and said, hey, we're rebooting American Idol on ABC, and we'd love for you to audition. Um, they must have found me online, and, um, and they just really liked me. So I, I, I said, you know what? Why not? My mom always raised me to just take any opportunity you can get um, because that is just the key to getting that one yes. And if I wouldn't have taken this opportunity by my mom's, um, by my mom's doing, then I would not have made it to the top 24 of American Idol. And so fast forward um, to, I guess, about February. Um, I go out for Hollywood Week, and Hollywood Week was one of the most grueling and stressful weeks of my life. I, um, I know that kind of sounds weird, because it's like everyone thinks Hollywood Week, it can't be that bad, you know? But it, I kid you not, I had 13 hours of sleep in four days. And I don't know if you could do the math, but that's, I think, like, three hours a day, I think, total. And I remember, if you know the show American Idol, there's a, there's a, there's a, week, a day in Hollywood Week called Group Round. And that's probably one of the hardest days of Hollywood Week. And that night, I went to bed at 2.30 in the morning. Our call time every day is camera ready downstairs by 5.45 in the morning. And I had to get up at 4, and I was in the shower, and I'm standing there under the water, and I kid you not, I fell asleep standing up. And that has never happened to me. So that was just another level of exhaustion. But that also showed me that I, have, I can do it. And one thing Lionel Richie said, who I sang one of his songs, incredible, incredible artist and writer, one thing he said is, this is how it's like in the real world. And he says, this reminds me of when I started out. And that really hit home. The fact that I went through that and I made it through Hollywood Week just showed me, like, maybe I can do this. It was another, it was another, another sign of this is, this is what I'm meant to do. And... Fast forward again to the last week that I was a, t- uh, a part of American Idol, um, top 24. I, was, um, I chose to sing Hello by Lionel Richie, as you guys heard. And um, it's a song I had been confident with and I'd known like the back of my hand for many, many years. Lionel Richie had been a very big inspiration of mine for my whole life musically. My dad is a huge fan of his. Showed me his music at a very young age. So it wasn't if I knew the song, I knew I knew the song. But as the week went on, it was getting closer to that performance, I started second-guessing every little thing I was doing. I was listening to the other performers and just seeing how good they were doing or how great they were doing and just picking my own performance apart. And that leads me to my third and final P, um, which is pride. Um, 
And I know it's, they say it's bad to have too much pride, but pride in yourself is key. I lost that. I wasn't proud of what I was doing because I started second-guessing everything. I started thinking, is Lionel going to really like this? Are the producers going to like this? Is America going to like this? And it just, I, I became less and less proud of what I was doing. And I think that truly shined through in that final performance. And it, it wasn't up to par, up to, my, up to my standards, you know? And I went home after that, and a, it was like another one of those ripped out from underneath me moments. But this was a little different because I knew I had accomplished something, but I wasn't proud of it just yet. And it took me a few weeks, and I, I was thinking, and I was thinking, but I finally came to the conclusion that I am proud of what I accomplished. Top 24 on American Idol is not easy. There was thousands and thousands of people that auditioned, and I got to that 24. And that, for me, I finally, over the, honestly, over the past couple weeks, have become proud of what I've accomplished. And it's, it, was, it was hard, but I, but I made it. And in the end of the day, success is a state of mind. Um, yeah, I could go back and I could change certain things to make them go a little better, like The Voice or American Idol, but then I wouldn't be here in front of you guys sharing my story and sharing who I've become. Um, today, I am the most passionate about what I do. I persevere more than I ever have, and I truly am the most proud of myself than I ever have been. And I used to ask, hello, is it me you're looking for? And today I say, hello, it is me you're looking for. Thank you.